Why is it reasonable for him to have to pay that? Well, because I feel that he was completely responsible for breaking it. Um, and not just through just fiddling with it in a way that would be a regular way, shall we say, if there is a regular way to fiddle with something, which is opening and closing, I can see that, it's, that is within the normal workings of something. You're not suing Hugh for the £1,905 in that second quote. You're suing him for the 800 that you were first quoted. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Um, well, because I, I feel that's possibly more reasonable. Um, I think that that would, that would pay for the parts, hopefully, and, of course, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be unreasonable in this situation. Now, two more questions for you, for, sir. The first thing is there's a message, I think, between the two of you. Now, Tom, the first message I'm going to refer you to is I'll let you off the sunroof as long as you don't mind me occasionally cursing you. It's £800 to fix, so that's not going to happen. But, yeah, wouldn't mind some petrol and pizza money. What was your response to that? What did you um, find? Well, I said, no way. I said, it was, surely can only be a fuse, it works, and then it didn't work. Um, and your response, sir? Read it to me. Can you see from there? Um, well, yes, it's a fuse, it'd be 50p, but uh, anything electrical has stopped working. And your response, sir? Oh, mate, I really can't afford anything like that much. And what do you say at the end? It's very important. I, I apologise. I said sorry. Were you sorry because you believed you caused a damage, or were you sorry because you couldn't afford that sum of money? Um, well, both. A bit of both. Understood. One of the issues in this case, Tom, is you have to demonstrate to me two things in law. Firstly, that he behaved negligently, which means he acted like an unreasonable person. The next thing you have to demonstrate to me is that this was a mechanical failure out of the ordinary. You've described to me and given me a bit of a demonstration about what Hugh did. You keep talking about him putting his hand up as if he was trying to stop a lift. I need you as clearly as you possibly can to explain what he was doing. He was trying to see if it would stop from closing automatically if it met resistance, i.e. his hand. Sir, you'd agree with me for all sorts of health and safety reasons. It makes sense that a sunroof would stop closing in the event that somebody's hand was there. Yeah. So it's not an unreasonable thought on his part to put his hand there. But I would say it would be unreasonable then to test that theory after, not, after being asked not to do that, because, obviously, it may have that feature, it may not. Finding that out seems to have cost this sunroof its life. <laughs> Hugh, do you have any reason to believe that this particular model of car may have problems with the sunroof? Uh, well, obviously. So I understand it. My clerks, in assisting you, have been able to find some information, albeit not from the car manufacturer, that this particular vehicle does have problems with the sunroof. Is that right? I believe so. I think other people have reported, um, well, sunroofs breaking. I'm not sure in what circumstances. The manufacturer has never made an admission about this particular mechanical issue on the car. And by law, where there is a real problem with a vehicle, they have to disclose that to the general public. What he was referring to are consumer websites which make clear that amongst the various issues with this particular car is that the sunroof breaks from time to time. Now, I have to determine what weight I give that, bearing in mind this is just consumer tittle-tattle and not the official admission of the manufacturer. Do you understand? Do you have any reason to believe, or did you know that this particular car had problems with the sunroof? No, I, I, don't, I don't think that's necessarily the case. I mean, I would say that if you look up almost any electrical fault on any car, given how large the, the World Wide Web is, that you will always find someone who said, yep, yeah, my electric window stopped working, my boots stopped working, this stopped working. There'd always be some instances, because they produce so many thousand or million cars. That, sir, is the exactly correct legal response to his submission. I presume the fact that you're driving around like this is not exactly the best thing for your friendship. Not ideal, no. And, Hugh, if you had the money, if you were a millionaire, would you give it to him? Uh, if I was a millionaire, I'd give him a lot more, uh, just because we're good friends. Understood. Tom, Hugh, this isn't a straightforward case. Hugh, you were in Tom's car and you were fiddling about with his sunroof when you shouldn't have done. What's more, he asked you to stop. The question in this case is whether or not the damage that was caused to the sunroof was an accident or whether you acted negligently. Tom, your case in law is a difficult one because you have to prove to me so that I'm more sure than not that he did act unreasonably. I find everything that you say to be true, sir. What I conclude, therefore, is Hugh fiddled about with the sunroof when you asked him not to. 
However, he did stop. What's more, although he might have been testing it, he was entitled to assume that the thing was sufficiently robust enough to work. I understand your frustration entirely. And I have to say, sir, that it must be deeply upsetting to you what happened. And if I legally could, I would have found it in your favour. The difficulty in this case is that, on balance, it is very difficult to prove that, however silly Hugh was, he caused the damage negligently rather than by accident. And so, consequently, I have to dismiss your case. Hugh, one thing I do suggest that you might do is that you do what you can to pay a little bit towards the repairs. You made that offer. You are working. And it seems to me that even though I can't award it in law, you might morally want to do something to assist Tom. Bearing in mind, although it was an accident, it was still your fault, if not your fault in law. Tom, your case is dismissed. Thank you very much. Tom's case was dismissed, and he was awarded nothing by the court. Do you want to follow me out, guys? Let's find out how both parties felt about their day in court. But it was only an accident. Yeah, you may not have meant it intentionally, but it certainly happened because of what you did. So, kind of, I don't know. Drunk, I drunk, drunk driving is an accident if you run somebody over, but they'll still throw you in jail for it. A year ago, he agreed to pay it all, and then that was withdrawn, so we'll see what he thinks he can afford or whatever. I, mean, I think maybe now he might take it a bit more seriously. I'm not going to buy him a brand new car, uh, which is how much it would cost to fix the sunroof, so um, maybe I'll just have to. Um, I have a pint every time uh, I'm in the pub with him. Don't be stupid. Stay and watch the best judgment of moments. And I'm talking. Understood? Don't be a moron. Subscribe to Judge Rinder YouTube channel. Right now. That's an order.